If you're a scientist, you're going to use both descriptive and inferential statistics. So in today's video, I wanna walk you through the difference between these and how to use them most effectively as a scientist. So for descriptive statistics, you're summarizing and organizing characteristics of a data set. So there's three main ways that you do this in, des in descriptive statistics. There's distribution, which is basically the frequency of each value. And when you have continuous data, you can bin it to, instead of saying like 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 are all different values, I could say from 0 to 1 to show the distribution. There's central tendency. So these are averages of the values. These are basically where is the center of the data. And then there's variability, which describes the spread of the values. These are things like variability, standard deviation, things like that. On the other hand, we have inferential statistics. So inferential statistics are making conclusions and predictions based off the data. And so these are things like hypothesis testing. So what we're essentially doing in inferential statistics is we're taking data from a sample and saying, is this likely true for the population or is it just for the sample that we observed? Hypothesis testing helps us do this. We establish a hypothesis, something like doing 150 minutes of cardiovascular activity a week will decrease cardiovascular risk. Now, if we take that hypothesis, we could get a group of people and run a study and give them 150 minutes of exercise, cardiovascular exercise a week, and then determine their cardiovascular diseases or specific parameters. And what we want to know is, okay, that worked, even if it like did lower like resting heart rate and blood pressure, that worked for the given set. Does that, is that actually applicable to the population? And that's what we use inferential statistics for. We also use inferential statistics to get confidence interval. So with our confidence interval, that not only gives us the average, but it lets us know what's actually the range of the average given a confidence level. And so some examples of using inferential statistics are doing something like comparison tests. So for example, a t-test comparing these two different groups to see if it's within the confidence level significant of a difference um, for the sample, which means it could be inferred upon the population. Correlation tests. So is one variable related to another variable? That's inferential statistics. And regression tests. So this could be like linear regression test or multiple linear regression tests. All of those are part of inferential statistics. They help us make conclusions about the data. So the key difference between descriptive and inferential is descriptive statistics really only uses the sample. And specifically, it just describes the sample. Whereas inferential statistics uses the sample data to predict and make conclusions about the population. And so we use this to determine, okay, maybe these two things are correlated because they have a higher are, but is it like, is how likely would that happen if we just took a random sampling from anything? And that is what we use inferential statistics for. So some examples include if we had the data of blood sugar concentrations for 200 diabetic and 200 healthy individuals, there are different ways that we could analyze that data in both a descriptive and an inferential way. So for descriptive statistics, we can answer the questions of what is the average blood sugar for the 200 diabetic and 200 healthy individuals? We could also say what is the distribution of blood sugar levels for the diabetic and healthy individuals? Those would both fall under descriptive statistics. On the other hand, inferential statistics, we could ask something like, do diabetic and healthy individuals have different blood sugar levels? And so this, we could do a t-test between the data sets for our two different populations and determine, are they actually statistically different, which means most likely the population has a different blood sugar levels. Hopefully that helps you realize the difference of where to use inferential and descriptive statistics. Now, I do wanna let you know that if you want more content, even of this video in the extended cut that basically replaces this part inside the Research Mastery Academy, there I'm including practical tips for applying descriptive and inferential statistics and also how to avoid common pitfalls. And you can also get these slides downloadable. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.